With success ballast from round one is this one, the Hexis Aston Martin of Thomas Ackery and Julian Rodriguez. But it's only five kilos and unlikely to make a significant difference in the race. Five, uh, five kilos, it's uh, not... Uh, it's, not uh, it's, it's OK, it's OK for us, yes. Very fantastic. It's a nice Very track, good. small yeah. track, but it's nice. We are very excited. The grid forming up in the afternoon sunshine for the first of two races today. Last year's early season front runners, Matek Ford, back on the pace. Yes, uh, with Eric, uh, we, we try a new strategy. So uh, I did the pole position. We, we were very, very happy, but uh, we think the, the race will be very difficult. You saw from the caption, Eric de Donker was expected to start the race, but there's obviously a bit of strategy going on there. That's Walter Salles, the other car from Matek, and this is the circuit we were talking about, 2.7 kilometres, 10 turns, six of them in first or second gear. It's very demanding, it's a technical circuit. The teams have taken to it very well. Remember, they've never seen it before, so this is all new for all the teams as is our pace car for this season, the Wiesman GT, leading them away around their formation lap. Now pulling off into pit lane, leaving the two Matek Fords on the front row of the grid. Lunardi, the pole man, on the right of your picture, nearest the camera now, is in control of the start. He looks up above the track to the bridge. The lights there are red. That holds them back at 60, 70 kilometres an hour until the lights go green when the chief starter says that the first race here at Adria this weekend is go. And they are four wide coming towards us into turn one at 200 kilometres an hour. Lunardi's got away with it. But next to him, Walter Sallas has been monstered by Christopher Nygaard in the Fisher Racing 4 GT, but it's still 4 GT, 4 GT, 4 GT. We had a little ride there with Manuel Rodriguez, qualified 17th and right in the thick of it. But look, the other Hexis Aston Martin is right up there as well in fourth place. And Ferrari looking stronger than ever. Morgan there as well. Corvette we saw a lot of at Silverstone. Seven there going through your picture is the Kessel Racing Ferrari of Claudio Ricci. The Ferrari's got a, there's a little bit of bumping and boring going on there. The Ferraris have got a bigger restrictor at Silverstone between qualifying and racing. Didn't help them there, but it's making them look a little bit going as well. Angelbert's going as well. Three of them in one corner. Akari Gattuso and Angelbert just went straight past, and Jeffrey Horion as well in the Porsche. So four cars have gone through there, and it does suggest that uh, Nygaard has got a problem in this car. He's just dropped four places in one corner in the next couple of yards. Here's how it happened. He's looking good there. The Aston Martin right up behind him. He runs deep into the corner, leaves the inside open, and through go four cars just like that. Bang, 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 bang. So his day has turned from great to not so good after all. Gattuso still in this battle with Angelbert. He's on the inside, he's up the kerb. Gattuso goes wide. Angelbert on the inside. Orion's having it as well. Through goes the Porsche. Morgan and Porsche have just duffed up Stefano Gattuso. So it's all change and they're moving forwards. But the Ford GT pair from Matek are clear at the front. Have a look at this. Through goes the Morgan on the inside, uh, almost on the grass there, and the Porsche of Geoffrey Orion sees the opportunity as the Ferrari stays wide, and here's what's going on. Look, that wheel looks as if it's had a bang and it's not coming off. Number 12 is in fifth place there, Orion, and that's a 
Corvette after a spin, and it looks as though it's got some damage there. Luca Piri looks as if he's out of it in that car. This battle, this little train, still together, though. A little bit of chat on the pit wall about the possible outcomes here. Ackery couldn't pass, and now he's being passed. Ackery couldn't get on terms with the car in front of him, and he left the door open just momentarily for Dimitri Angelbert, who went straight through with no hesitation. Well, Thomas Ackery, one of the quicker drivers in this series, and in contention for the title this year. A moment of inattention. Here, look at it. He was concentrating on the car in front. Dimitri Angelbert behind him thought, oh ho, that's big enough for a Morgan and through he went, forcing Ackery to stay wide, leaving the door open for Geoffrey Orion, who didn't get through. But Orion's trying now. Thomas Ackery is in there cursing himself for letting the Morgan through. And while he's thinking about that, he's let a Porsche through as well. So we've seen a lot of that on this circuit. One tiny little error forces you wide, and it takes so long to get back up to speed, and then you've lost the position completely. Uh, hands over the 27 Audi to Jean-Denis Delatraz, almost hit by an Aston Martin in pit lane. They shouldn't have let that go then. That was so, so close. Lunardi still leads it. Zumerli hands over the Brixier Aston Martin to Alex Frassinetti. Ackery handing over that Aston Martin to Julian Rodriguez, the younger one of the pair. Manuel Rodriguez is in the number four car. Angel Bear hands over to Johan Boris Shire. And there is all kinds of stuff going on on track. Safety cars out. That was Phil Quaife and Dimitris de Vericos, I think. And in comes the race leader. Lunardi has a free pit stop under yellows. Hands over to De Donka, and away we go again. And about 10 seconds behind the safety car, his margin now. That Lamborghini's not in second place. That's just where it happened to be on the racetrack. And second place is Nicky Lanik in the Porsche. And it is there, just at the very back of your picture. Interesting battles for position going on throughout the field, as always. But here comes second place now, and he is 10 seconds away from the race leader and right in the thick of it as well. And running wide, he's just dropped second place, I think, to Thomas Much. Yes, he has. Much has taken over the number one Ford GT. And now he's fighting back Nicky Lanik, but uh, Thomas Much having none of it. Stitches up the Aston Martin through on the inside, staying wide, not a battle for position there. So now we're looking at Ford GT first, Ford GT second, Matek Ford, Matek Ford. It is Dodonka, the reigning... Oh, look at that, they're all over the place. That Ferrari's right up in the air. That's the number seven car. Let's have a look at that again. And it was the Corvette in the background, whacked the Ferrari, and it rode right up on top of the Morgan. No safety car for that, though. They've all got away. And we're on board in the number four. Fred Makovici, very quick in this car, now trying to do battle with Orion and with the uh, number 10. We saw the pit stop take place. And they came out in this order, but now Makovici, oh, trying for the gap there. And that was bold stuff from Fred Makovici. And a stop-go penalty for being one second faster on the pit stop than the allotted 65 seconds for Thomas Much. And he's still out there in the thick of it. Oh, Makovici outbreaks himself, and that's going to give Thomas Much back second place. Much has done a stop-go penalty, come back out more or less in second place, and has now grabbed it. And that is the domination of these cars. This is the leader, though. This is Eric de Donker, the GT4 champion. He's second outing, and it's a checkered flag as they go over the line. Matek Ford, first and second. What an amazing performance. Aston Martin, three and five. And this is really going to scramble up the points table after this race. Congratulations, Eric. You made it look so easy out there today. Uh, it was not easy, mate. In fact, I mean, we, we made a bet with Martin. We, we changed the order of driver. We put Dino in the in first race and me for the second race for the start. So Dino did a fantastic job. He, he pulled 20-something seconds. Here's the leaderboard then. And with Morgan on the back foot, it's looking good for the Hexis drivers at the top of the tree. But it's still close and it's still early. 
And as it gets later, there'll be one more race as GT3 races into darkness for the first time ever.